Welcome, and welcome back, everybody, to the OK Grognard Show. Today is Wednesday, October 9th, 2024. It ain't 10 a.m. Central. It's about 10 to 11 in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Had some technical issues this morning and dealing with some family things, so I apologize for being behind schedule, but here we are nonetheless. And today we're looking at the first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Dungeon Master's Guide section on time in a dungeon. That's right, time in a dungeon. Hmm. If I could spend time in a dungeon, the first thing that I'd like to do is kick every door down and... Oh, that's a song. We really need to write that song, don't we? Okay, so we will do that eventually because everything I do is eventually, right? Anyway, Time in a Dungeon. What's that all about? Well, my friends, it's about keeping track of time in the dungeon or any other type of adventure. It's sometimes difficult, but it is at least important as the accurate as important as the accurate recording of time in the campaign. As has been mentioned elsewhere, the standard time breakdown is 10 minute rounds to the turn and 6 turns to the hour. All referees should keep a side record of time on a separate sheet of paper marking off the turns as they pass malaise or other actions which result in fractional turns should be rounded up to make complete turns. It is essential that an accurate time record be kept so that the DM can determine when to check for wandering monsters and in order to keep a strict check on the duration of some spells, such as bless, haste, strength, etc. The DM must also know how long it has been since the last time the party took a rest. The party should be required to, re to rest at least one turn in six. Catch your breath, right? Remember, the average party packs a lot of equipment, and in addition, they should rest a turn after every time they engage in combat or any other strenuous activity. I'm going to repeat those last two bits. A party should be required to rest at least one turn in six. Remember, the average party packs a lot of equipment. And in addition, they should rest a turn, 10 minutes, after every time they engage in combat or any other strenuous activity. That line just means column change. We're up on the right side of page 38, I think. So no, it's not. But anyway. Hey, you're an authorized user. Thanks for jumping in the chat. Sorry I'm late today. Let me continue. On occasion, a party may wish to cease movement and hole up for a long period, perhaps overnight, resting and recuperating or recovering spells. This does not exempt them, does not exempt them from occasional checks for wandering monsters, though the frequency may be moderated somewhat depending on conditions. Too frequent interruptions may make spell recovery impossible, Keeping correct records of duration of these periods is absolutely essential. That is so true. A lot of people probably gloss right over this stuff right there. They don't do the one out of every six turns resting. They don't do the 10-minute rest after a combat or other strenuous activity climbing a cliff face. Digging something up. Packing up extra treasure and then trundling across an uneven cavernous floor that's hard to get your footing on. All of that stuff will wind most people, even seasoned adventurers. Because, you know what? They're in for a whole day on this stuff. Maybe multiple days in a row. Yeah, passage of time. This is a part of what we lose, I think, even as we become more 
time conscious in newer editions of the game. And even as we become more uh, fiddly about how long things take and what can combine with other things and all of that other stuff, people just don't take as much time to do the... Now, of course, they build in things like short rests and long rests and say that those things need to happen. But I'll tell you what, a lot of times when you're playing, especially in one-shots, and you're just assuming that stuff happens and kind of hand-waving that stuff. And you know what? If you're getting together for two, three, four hours at a convention and it's all the time, you don't want to. I'm collecting firewood. I'm sewing up that tear in my cloak. That uh, I'm going to use, what kind of stitch should I use? Does anybody have any suggestions? No, we don't want to spend a lot of time doing that stuff. We want to make sure that the time we spend at the table is going to be fun and productive toward the outcome of the game. But don't force it. If somebody wants to uh, throw in a bit of flavor to make things a little more immersive, definitely, definitely allow that to happen at your tables. It's well worth it because a lot of times those little bits and pieces make the games memorable and more fun and more, as I say, immersive, more enjoyable for everybody involved. And that's an important part of the game, too. As, as important as time. But time in a dungeon. Keep in mind, one in every six turns, one turn after every combat or strenuous activity, you can decide how that plays out in your own tables for sure. So, let's keep that in mind, and uh, hey, sorry to be a little late today, got a lot of stuff going on, had a little bit of equipment problem, but I think we're up and good to go here, and I very much appreciate you jumping in as we talk about the first edition Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Dungeon Master Guide section on Time in a Dungeon. Don't forget, the show streams live on Twitch each Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central, unless I'm late, and is then archived on YouTube. Like, subscribe, follow, all of that other good stuff. It would be greatly appreciated. Also, thanks to our Patreon supporters, Tom Tullis of Fat Dragon Games, Carlos Lysing of Castle Entertainment, Heath Farnden of the Antibody d and 20 Dave O'Brien, Heidi and Eric Gygax Garland of Gaxland, Vince Ragusa, a.k.a. the Vince himself. Hey, the ever-present unauthorized user. And as always, Shane Bradley, DM Extraordinaire. This has been the OK Grognard Show from beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.